Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd show you how we do the little painting that you see at the beginning of the show, the little one with all the birch trees in it that the little painter guy's in. It's a very, very simple painting, and even if you've never done a painting before in your life, this one you can do. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint it at home. While they're doing that, come on up here and let's get started. Today I have my regular old pre-stretched double prime pre canvas and I've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of black gesso and allowed that to dry completely. Black gesso is dry. Now then, today we have three different colors of gesso. We have white gesso, black gesso, and gray gesso and I've just put them on a little plastic tray here. And we we'll use the old foam brush. It's easy to do. We just go right into the, right into a little bit of this gray gesso. And with this, we're going to paint the little trees that you see in the background, the little ones that are far, far back. Okay, let's go right up here now. We just take this and I'm just going to do a few of them on this canvas to show you how they were done. And then, then I'll put up a canvas that's already finished because it takes a while for this to dry. Well, maybe 20, 30 minutes, but see, that's all you do. Just, just pull down some basic ideas for tree trunks. And you have to make the decision how many trees live in your forest. See, and sometimes the trees are close together, sometimes far apart. Some of them will be thick, some will be thin. It's completely and totally up to you. And sometimes, some, sometimes in the woods you'll find trees that maybe one fell over. Maybe when he was just a little guy, maybe a big old bear came through here and stepped on him, put a little hurt in his back. Now then, Let's reflect those right down in here. And they don't have to be exact, just basic idea. That's all we're looking for. Just put them in, something like that. There, see? Now then, now I'll take, and I got a little liner brush here. With that, I'll just dip it in a little water because gesso, as you know, is a water-based paint. There we go, it's actually not a paint, it's a primer. You know, in the art world now, there's a lot of controversy about using acrylic under oils because they say it's not permanent. There, just turn it. But the gesso is a permanent medium. So if you're worried about acrylics under your oils disappearing after 40 or 50 years, this is considered a permanent medium. All right, now, we just thin this down very thin. And with that, we're just gonna make the indication of a lot of little tree limbs that just, just hang around out here and play all day but we're not worried about them being perfect because these are just little background limbs. Shoot, probably half of them won't even show. You're just putting it in for, for filler material. That easy. See there? You know, I get letters from people and say, Bob, I've got a little nervous twitch in my hand and it, I just can't paint because of that. This is your painting because if you have a little nervous twitch, you can make the most gorgeous tree limbs. You're ahead of the rest of us. I have to intentionally sort of shake my hand and pretend that I do. There, see, something like that. And you just figure out where you want them. And you put as many or as few as you want in your world. Very simple. Anybody can do this. As I say, I like to design paintings in every series that everybody can do, even if they've never painted. And in this series, this is the one. It is the easiest painting in the whole series. And it's also maybe one of the most effective. When we were doing the little opening, the people here in the studio just went crazy over this painting. It was absolutely their favorite. All right. And you know, it only takes a few seconds to see that little opening, but it takes a lot of fantastic people to put it together. This one was a brain, brainchild of my good friend, Jerry Morton, one of the engineers here at the station. There, old Jerry, he's, He's like me, he's got sort of a crazy imagination. You put the two of us together, we come up with wild ideas. But that's what makes it fun. Now then, see we've got a few little tree limbs there. Now we can just go down here with the same way and just put in the indication of a few things down here. And they don't have to match exactly what's up above. Just so we have some indications. Really, don't worry about this one. Just let it happen. This is one that you should enjoy and have a good time with. When Annette and I were traveling all over the country teaching, I wish we'd have had this painting for people to do because it works so well. And you can take this idea and you can do all kinds of things with the color gesso. Shoot, you could, for example, if you wanted to paint a barn, you could paint the entire barn 
the basic outline of it with just gessos. And then you come back and cover it with liquid clear and then go over it with transparent or semi-transparent colors and it shows through. It's a fantastic way to paint. Just makes it very easy and a lot of fun. And painting, as you know, should be a lot of fun. All right, there we go. Okay, that gives us a general idea of how you make the little background trees. Let me wipe off the little brush. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put the trees that are more distinct right over the top of it. And for that, I'm gonna use just pure white gesso, same little foam brush, see, just, just load it up like that. Just pure white gesso. Okay, let's go up in here now. And you decide where the trees live that are in the foreground, touch and pull down. As I'm pulling down, I'm adding a little bit more pressure to the brush so it automatically gets bigger toward the base. Normally, and I say normally because yours, heck, there's a tree that's different. Normally trees are bigger at the bottom than they are at the top. So I'm just gonna put a few in here so you can see how they look. Maybe this one here. Sometimes birch trees grow in clumps. In fact, most of the time they grow in clumps. But that'll give you an idea of how those were done. Now then, we'll go right below it and pull straight down. I start with a little more pressure and release or less pressure when we're going down. Now if you have trouble painting upside down, just take the canvas off and turn it over. There, that gives us a basic idea. That's all we're looking for in this. Just wanna show you how it's done. Back to my water and we'll go right back into that white gesso and once again, I'm just going to make the little tree limbs, but this is pure white gesso. If you're only using one foam brush, wash your brush in between the gray and the white so that this color is pure. You want this white gesso here, very strong. There we go. Isn't that fantastic, though? I just love little paintings like this. They really make painting so easy, and they're great. They're great if you're doing a little demonstration for, like, your family or your friends because they just won't believe what's happening right there in front of their eyes and all the preparatory work you do by yourself there we are isn't that neat but now if you have trouble making this paint flow across here it just means you don't have enough water in it just like when we're using the oils if they don't flow it means you don't have enough paint thinner so don't be afraid to put some water in it and this takes usually oh depending on heat and humidity and all that, usually it'll dry in about 15 to 30 minutes. And also depending how thick you put it, you can build gesso up. Okay, let's go down into the, let's go down into the bottom here and put some reflections. See there? And they did, once again, they do not have to be exact. Very few people are gonna sit and, and check your reflection to make sure it's identical to the thing above it. There, I love these colored gessos. I, I don't know why it took so long to get them. Since we've introduced them into the art world, they've just about become a standard. There, everybody's using them now. All right. Okay, a few over here. Something about like that. And that's really about all there is to it. And when you're at home and you have unlimited time and, and don't have a mean old director to come out and yell at you, you can just take your time and do all of these things that you want to do. I just want to show you how this painting was done because it's so different than anything we've done before and it's so wonderful. <laughs> it's worth taking the time to show you. And I hope you send me some photographs of things that you do with this because it's, this is just to stir your imagination because I know you can come up with much better things to do. There we are. Look at that though. All right, now then, let me wash this little brush out. One more thing I'll show you. I'm gonna take a, a fan brush, and I recommend you get one of your old fan brushes that's about wore out. We'll just take a little black, put a little bit of water with it just to thin it. This is just pure black, though. Just enough water to make it a little bit thinner. And I'm gonna take a knife, and I just wanna take and sort of flick it. See it? Just flick little globules of gesso on there. Just flick them on. Now this really works better if you have the canvas laying flat so you can get up above it and flick it. But this will show you how it's done. 
There we are. Just flick them on there. And it doesn't matter if these little globules go onto the black because when it dries, they won't even show. It won't even show. Now then, we'll go back here and I'll get the brush that, that we were using that just had black on it and very gently touch it. And this is still a little wet. I would suggest you allow it to dry when you're at home. But just give it a little pull. See how it makes it look like birch trees? Hmm. Isn't that sneaky? There. And it's gorgeous. You really can do this so easy. It's almost unbelievable. Once again, allow it to dry. But that easy. All those little flicks that you made up there, they cause the little dark indications in the, in the bark of a birch tree. And I tell you what, I have a canvas here that I've already prepared and have it completely finished. So you can see it's just basically the same thing that, that we've done there. I'm gonna put this canvas on my easel and then we'll go ahead and paint the picture. In the meantime, the other day I had a fantastic experience with a gorgeous, gorgeous little owl that I wanna share with you. And we'll put him up here and we'll look at him while we're changing these canvases. This is a great horned owl. One of my good friends in Florida, Cindy, loaned me this owl to play with a little bit. And he's very young, probably hmm, five, six months old. But he is one of the most gorgeous birds that you've ever seen. And when they get big, oh, look out there. <laughs> He's just playing, but the rascal almost got my nose there, but aren't those the most beautiful things? Now, I like animals so much, I'm telling you, I could just about make a career out of taking care of these little rascals because they're so beautiful. Isn't that something? We'll put him on at the end of this show and let you see him again because I think these owls are some of the most gorgeous creatures that God has ever made. They're just, they're just absolutely wonderful. Shoot, I'd like to have one for a pet, but you don't keep these kind of creatures as pets. These kind of creatures, God meant for them to be free. So we raise them up and we get them grown or we take care of them, whatever they need, and then we turn them loose and they go back to nature where they belong. So I don't suggest you keep wild animals as pets. Okay, we're back now. As I say, now we have a, one up here that's nice and dry and we can take off. So let's take and we'll start out cover the entire canvas with just a very thin coat of liquid clear. The one word that I need to repeat several times here is the word thin. You want the thinnest coat possible of liquid clear here. It's easy to put too much because you can't see it. So you want a very, very thin coat. Something like that. With the old two inch brush, it didn't take but a second to do it. That's all. Just cover the entire canvas with it. Something like that. I really like this little opening using this painting. I, the little painter guy, <laughs> he looks like he literally just steps right into the painting. That makes it so neat. All right. It's a lot of fun to make those. There. As I say, it takes a lot of fantastic people here to do that. There's a lot of video magic going on in there. And it's neat to be in a TV station and see how all this is done. All right, a little bit down here in the corner. Shoot, we'll be ready to go. Something about like that. That's all we need. There we are. Just make sure we got a nice coat. Very thin, very, very thin, all the way across. Like that. All right. Now then. The most fun part of the whole technique is washing the brush. That's my favorite part. We'll wash the brush, shake it off, <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. All right, now then. It takes very few colors to do this, but all the colors other than the titanium white are very transparent. That's most important so that your gesso work shows through. So let's start out today with a little touch of the Indian yellow. Just a very small amount, a tiny little bit. There, just load a little into the bristles and tap it. There, it's easy to go back and add a little more. So son, we're gonna take it off. So start out with just a small amount and you can always add more. And right across the base of these beautiful little trees that we painted, see, we'll just do this. 
something like that. And we'll do the same thing in the reflections. Well, that's pretty already, isn't it? But this acts like a glaze. The liquid clear there in the transparent color literally acts as a glaze. If you used, let's say you put these on with yellow gesso and you went over it with blue, then you would end up with a, a translucent green. And it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Try it. There we go. All right. I have several brushes here, so let me just grab another two inch brush. Don't want to spend all of our time washing brushes and upsetting the camera people. We'll go right into Thalo Blue. I love Thalo Blue. It's one of the prettiest colors. It's a gorgeous color. Just tap a little into the bristles. And let's go right up to the top of the canvas. And just making little X's. Just paint right down like that. See there? Isn't that fantastic? This works so wonderful. And it's so, so easy. So easy. As I say, if you've never painted a painting before, but you've always known there's an artist hiding inside of you, this is the one to get started on because it'll work. It'll work the first time, guaranteed. There. We'll do the same thing down here in the reflection. Like that. There. I like paintings that work easy because if you have a little success with this, then you got enough confidence to go and you try something a little harder and a little harder. And that's the way we learn. We just do things over and over. And each time it gets easier and better and you can do more and more difficult things. Now then, I like to sort of darken the edges a little bit. So with the same old brush, I'm gonna go right into a little bit of, a little touch of the Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a gorgeous color, but it's much darker. Let me just work these out a little bit like that, soften them. See there? There's no such things as mistakes on these, shoot. The worst thing can happen here, if you do happen to make a big boo-boo, and that does happen once in a while in our world, you take a paper towel or a rag with a little paint thinner on it and you just wipe it off. The gesso is still there and you can do it again. This is the way I practice these things. I just wipe them off and do them again. Prussian blue to darken the top in the corners, Prussian blue, strong, dark. Good, nice color. There we are. See there? Now we have a graduation of color. And we'll do the same thing down here in the reflections. Something about like that. See there? Okay. I say, when Annette and I were traveling and teaching, I wish we'd have had some paintings like this to show people. But we didn't have the colored gessos then, and, and we couldn't do these kind of things. Now we have them. There, just sort of blend that together. Mm. Wouldn't, this be a, wouldn't this be a fantastic scene to maybe put some Indians on horses out here? That would be beautiful. If you're going to do that, I'd recommend you paint this little background put your color in, allow that to dry. I'd let it dry completely. Then I'd go back and I'd paint in all my little subjects that I wanted in there if I wanted to have some, well, some Indians on horses. I like Indians on horses because they'd sort of match the birch trees if they were on pintos. They would just sort of blend right in there. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of titanium white on the fan brush, just one a small, small amount, about like so. Let's go up in here. Now I want to begin putting the indication of a little snow that lives back here in the background. Not, not much color, very little in between back here. Just a little, just the indication of a little, see, just a little. So those background trees have something to set on. Oh, there. If you put it on very thin like that, it's still fairly transparent. Even though white is a very opaque color, if you put it on thin, we're okay. And we're just putting in background stuff. In fact, back here, we just want it to sort of disappear. You can take your finger and smooth it in so it just disappears. And we don't even know where anything's at. Look at that. That easy. That easy. A little bit back in here. Now, this won't be an exact duplicate of what you see at the beginning of the show. But it will certainly show you exactly how we made it. There. 
because no, no painting ever comes out exactly the same here. We don't, we don't use any patterns or tracings or anything like that. So none of them ever come out exactly the same. <laughs> and that's even better. That's, that's what makes it fun. All right, now I'm going to load a lot of white paint, a lot of white paint right into the bristles because now we want to get serious. Now we're going to do the things that are in the foreground. And in our world, maybe, yep, you're right. Comes right down like that. So you can just sort of cut around the tree there. There. Right up to him. We'll go around in some places. Some places we'll just let that blend right on back. It's up to you. You make the big decisions. There. Maybe it comes right on up here. I don't know. I don't know. Each of us will see it a different way, and that's what makes it fantastic. That's what makes it fantastic. If you want to make it look like snow's going up the tree, just give it a little upward pull. It'll look like there's a little bank of snow right up in there. That's very nice sometimes. It makes a very nice effect. There. And there. See, leave some of these little dark areas in there. They turn out to be your best friends. Looks like little areas in between layers of snow. Probably a little bunny rabbit hiding right in there looking out at you. Okay, let's come maybe right in here. You make the decision. Really, I just want to show you how to do things. What you do is totally, totally and completely up to you. There, because painting is a very individual thing. Everybody, everybody paints differently. That's what makes it wonderful. Let's see, maybe over in here we make this side a little, little stronger, a little bigger, wherever. Now then, I want to create the illusion of a few little reflections. I don't want to lose this purity down here. But I just take a clean brush, grab the base of that a little bit, just a little. You really don't even have to hardly add any color. You can add a touch if you want to. I would suggest, though, very little. I don't want to ruin the purity of this reflection, but I want it to look like water. And just by doing this, this little simple step, and then very lightly going across, just enough to disturb it a little bit. See, it already it looks like the shimmer of water across there. All right. Isn't that fantastic? Now then. Let me redefine that edge a little. I sort of bumped it with a brush. But it's easy to fix because we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. Let's have a little, yep, little doer hangs right out there. He just lives there. There he is. See him? All kinds of little things. And, and we, had a, we had a little peninsula that the little painter guy at the beginning of the show jumped on. So we'll put it in. Give him something to stand on right about there. See, there it comes. There. There we go. Something about like that. Okay, that's a little place for him to stand. Now then, all we need to do, get our knife, and get a little bit of the liquid white, put the least little touch of titanium white with it. I just want to thin it down. We'll come right back in here. And with that, we just cut in some water lines. And that's basically all that was done in the little painting that you see at the beginning of the show. As I say, it unquestionably is the simplest painting in this entire series. And you can do it. You literally can do this one. There. It's a gorgeous little painting. And I think it'll open your mind to ideas like you can't believe. It'll, it'll stir the imagination, get you excited because there's a million things you can do with this. It's really just up to you. Hope you've enjoyed this little painting. It's been a lot of fun for us, and it's one of the most fantastic ideas. Let me see some of your work. Send me some photos, okay, from all of us here. I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.